So you just picked up your new car, your new project, whatever it may be. Congratulations, but we've all been there. The newness is starting to subside. You start getting the itch, the yearning. The bug has bit you and it is something fierce. You wanna start modding, but where do you start? Sure, you can go get a big wing, get some of those sweet vents or maybe some beaded seat covers, but don't just toss your money away. Let us help you out because that's what we're here for. And this is Marvin from Your Tuning, by enthusiasts, for enthusiasts. And we're here to guide you through your journey to achieve car zen. At least for now. The great thing is you can get all this and more directly from us. Visit yourtuning.com to get the sweetest stuff from new exhaust, tune, wheels, to even air fresheners and OEM replacement parts. When it comes to our list for the five best mods for the most bang for your buck to start your build, remember that it's just our opinion and there's really no hard and fast rule to start your build. In the end, you do you boo boo, we aren't the ones to yuck your yum. With all that out of the way, let's just get right into it. In my personal experience, a tune is probably one of the biggest differences I saw when I got my GTI. There are generally a few options, whether it's piggyback, which plugs into the ECU and leaves the stock tune intact, or you can go full send and get an ECU flash tune, which rewrites the stock tune and generally packs a little more punch. Essentially, what each option does is changes various aspects of how your car operates to optimize performance and handling characteristics. A stage one is pretty much noticeable almost immediately from the butt dyno. But depending on what your build is, you could even go to higher stages as long as you have the correct supporting mods. You want to get them gains? Go ahead and start off by getting yourself a tune. All right, tune done. Your car's feeling pretty peppy. Now what? You know what you need. You need to get more low. Factory ride heights typically play it pretty safe, but leave a lot of wheel gap. But we're not here for that. So let's go ahead and throw that right out the window. To achieve more low, there are generally a few options. You have your lowering springs, your coilovers, and your air rod. Now lowering springs are generally pretty subtle, nothing too crazy, and most of the time, not really adjustable. They will get you that drop though, and most of the time it looks pretty good once it settles. But what if you don't want that? What if you wanna fully dial it in and adjust exactly how low you wanna go? Then you can go ahead and get some coilovers. Lowering springs and coilovers are pretty nice to give you that, that decent drop without being too involved. You just kind of throw them up there, get it installed, call it a day. But what if still that's just not enough for you? You wanna be able to raise, lower, have that dynamic change in how you want your car to ride. Welcome to the beauty of what is known as air ride. Being able to do that means at the press of a button, you'll be able to change your ride height, lay frame when you're at the show, pick it back up, raise up a little higher if you need to go over some speed bumps. That is pretty much what you can do. It's a little more involved, but once it's done, chef's kiss, it looks beautiful. Now that that's squared away, time to tackle the next item in our order of operations, wheels. We here at Yuri Tuning are firm believers in getting wheels after you lower your car. Because you don't wanna put wheels on a car without lowering it. Cardinal sin number one. You can do it backwards if you want, but sometimes it just looks a little weird. Wheels will get you that curb appeal, that street cred, that extra detail that you aren't just another stock car on the road. Since 90% of the cars come with low pressure cast wheels, go ahead and get yourself a set of flow formed wheels or some forged wheels and shed that extra weight at each corner. You want that less rotating mass to give your car a more responsive feel, which are also better for that troublesome pothole that you may come across. You got your wheels, congrats. Let's go ahead and keep them looking pretty. Let's face it, OEM brake pads can get a bit dusty and don't have that much bite. It's all around good, but it can be better. OEM is good, but it can be better. A good set of pads would be awesome for less dust and also means less cleaning with the added benefit of really good stopping power. Bonus points if you upgrade your rotors as well. 
Taking in all this is getting quite exhausting, isn't it? I now see why Andres loves those puns. Finally, our car is running great, sitting great, looking great, and stopping great. It is now time to sound great. Sure, the actual benefits of an aftermarket exhaust can be better flow through the system. It's not nearly as restrictive, but let's be real. We all want our car to sound awesome. There's nothing like that sweet, sweet exhaust note when it's done properly. It's just like music to my ears. Gorgeous. Now, if you want to go for extra credit and get those bonus points, go ahead and couple that exhaust with a new intake to get that full unrestricted breathing experience. With a new tune, suspension, new wheels, brakes, exhaust, and intake if you're feeling froggy, you will definitely notice a difference and turn heads. Go ahead and comment below and let us know what you typically start off when you have a new build or new project. And if you like this video, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with us whenever we release new content like this. Take it easy, enjoy that build. Later.